In our previous issues, we have repeatedly raised the issue of the presence of plumage in dinosaurs. This fact has been known to scientists for a long time, but they only received direct evidence in 1998. Fossilized remains of feathered dinosaurs have been found in China. Today, we'll tell you more about the discovery and introduce you to some feathered dinosaurs. You can also find out when and for what purpose dinosaurs acquired feathers. By subscribing to the Age of Dinosaurs channel, you can be the first to know about the new releases of videos and share your opinions with other viewers in the comments. We also encourage all science lovers to actively support the creators of this channel with likes. In the classic view, all dinosaurs look like huge reptiles. Even in good documentaries made in the 90s of the last century, they have scaly skin like a snake or a crocodile. And the creators of feature films still cannot move away from the images shown in cult classics like Jurassic Park. It is quite difficult to scare the viewer with raptors and other predators, decorated like tropical birds. Meanwhile, scientists have long noticed the similarity between dinosaurs and the remains of the skeletons of modern birds. The first assumptions about the possible presence of feathers appeared quite a long time ago. In 1969, paleontologist John Ostrom described a dinosaur called Deinonychus. These manipulators were known before this. They were first discovered by famous explorer Barnum Brown in the late 1920s. A highly fragmented dinosaur skeleton was discovered in 1927 and partially described by Brown in 1931. At that time, it had a different working title. The researcher did not finish his work, and the incomplete skull, fragments of the spine, and limbs went into a storage of the American Museum of Natural History for a long time. Deinonychus lived in what is now the United States and possibly Brazil. They grew up to 3.3 meters in length and up to 120 centimeters in height. These small theropods weighed about 70 kilograms. About 30 years later, Brown showed the exhibit to student John Ostrom. And in 1964, Ostrom, as part of an expedition, discovered several more fragments belonging to the same species. When describing the dinosaur, which received the name Deinonychus, the young scientist noted some features of its structure. The skeleton of this small dinosaur had a special lunate bone. It is characteristic of the forelimbs of birds and is needed for folding the wings. Due to the strong resemblance of the Deinonychus to birds, the researcher assumed that it was warm-blooded and could have been covered in feathers. These statements caused a serious resonance in the scientific community. In one of the following works, Ostrom even suggested that he might have been mistaken. But subsequent discoveries of the remains of this dinosaur only confirmed its similarity to modern birds. This forced many scientists to reconsider their views, but material evidence of the presence of feathers in the form of imprints of the skin of the Deinonychus has not yet been found. The students and followers of these scientists increasingly began to use illustrations showing feathered dinosaurs in their works. In 1974, paleontologist Robert Baker published an article entitled The Renaissance of Dinosaurs. It featured the first images of dinosaurs with feathers. The scientists also directly stated that dinosaurs were an advanced group of warm-blooded creatures. In 1988, Gregory Paul's book, Predatory Dinosaurs of the World, was published. In it, Baker's students said that he knew for sure that dinosaurs such as Deinonychus and Velociraptor were definitely covered with feathers. He had no doubt that over time, much evidence would be found for the presence of feathers in dinosaurs. But even without the presence of skin prints, feathered dinosaurs appeared in this and other publications of the author. By the early 90s, our researchers had little doubt that at least small dinosaurs were covered with primitive feathers. For example, the Soviet paleontologist Mikhail Ivaknenko 
In his book, The Living Past of the Earth, published in 1987, depicted an Avamima with a thick feather covering. Avamim is a small carnivorous theropod living in Asia between 84 to 66 million years ago. It did not exceed 1.5 meters in length, and its name translates as bird-like. It was first discovered in the Gobi Desert in 1981 by Soviet paleontologist Sergei Kurzanov. The skeleton found was a missing tail. Therefore, the scientists believed that the dinosaur was tailless. Later discoveries dispelled this misconception. It was a fast and agile predator. Most scientists believed that it could have been an omnivore. They were prompted to this idea by the structure of the animal's mouth. It looked more like a beak, but the jaws had teeth characteristic of omnivores. Kurzanov himself suggested that Avamim could have fed on insects. This is evidenced by the structure of its neck and the shape of its vertebrae. And perhaps these theropods could have united in fairly large flocks. Finally, in 1996, the hopes of paleontologists around the world came true. A Chinese farmer who was keen on finding fossils discovered two interesting fragments. They bear the imprint of unusual dinosaurs. One sample was purchased by the Nanji Institute of Geology and Paleontology. The other went to the National Geographic Museum in Beijing. The fossils are approximately 122 to 124 million years old. The dinosaur found was named Sinosauroteryx, which means Chinese feathered lizard. Canadian paleontologist Phil Curry photographed one of the exhibits and showed it to scientists from the United States. One of the people who saw these photographs first was John Ostrom. More than 30 years later, his theory has found material confirmation. But even now, the scientific community could not immediately accept this revolutionary discovery. In the first article on Sinosauroteryx, it is called a bird. Later, it was nevertheless classified as a non-avian dinosaur from the family Comsocnathae. But some scientists believed that it was not feathers that were imprinted on the rock. Alan Fiducia suggested that these were collagen fibers, the ridges on the backs and tails of some modern aquatic lizards consist of such formations. The dispute between supporters of these theories was settled only in 2017. A team of researchers used modern technology to once again study the fossils. They concluded that these prints were made by primitive filamentous feathers. Of course, these feathers were very different from the plumage of modern birds. The closest thing to them in structure is the down that covers the chicks. The feathers that cover the kiwi bird also have a similar structure. It is impossible to use such feathers for flight. The plumage of the Sinosauroteryx may have also served to retain heat or to attract the opposite sex. Also, feathers could have been a means for camouflage. Also in 2017, scientists managed to restore the color of feather cover on this dinosaur. It turned out that it was painted very unevenly. The back was dark and the lower part of the body was light. The tail was painted in vertical alternating stripes of dark and light shades. And on the face, there was a kind of mask similar to the coloring of a raccoon's face. Within a couple of years after the discovery of the Sinosauroteryx, several feathered dinosaurs were discovered in China. Among them were species such as the Microraptor, Bayapasaurus, and Caudioteryx. They were all small in size, mostly their weight did not exceed several kilograms. Except that the Bayapasaurus could grow up to 2 meters and weigh up to 40 kilograms. This lizard from the Baypao province belongs to the Therizinosa family. The first fossil finds of this dinosaur were made in 1996. This small theropod lived on Earth during the Cretaceous period, approximately 125 million years ago. Its entire body was covered with the same thin fluffy feather fibers as of those on the Sinosauroteryx, but they were longer and were directed along the forelimbs. 
but it differed from the other members of its family with its large skull. At the end of its mouth was a toothless beak. The teeth were located in the back of the mouth and in the cheek area. Cauditerix is a small insectivorous theropod. It lived in China at the same time as the previous described species. It was opened in 1997. The body length of this dinosaur did not exceed one meter and weighed just over two kilograms. An interesting feature of the feather covering this species is the presence of several types of feathers. His legs were covered with a thread-like down, which most likely served to keep him warm. And on the short tail, there were real contour feathers. Thanks to them, the dinosaur got its name. It means tail with feathers. These feathers were not symmetrical in structure. Therefore, there was no suitable way for flight. But the Microraptor. It couldn't fully fly, but it could glide from tree to tree. To do this, he grew feathers not only in his front legs, but also on his hind legs. This is one of the smallest dinosaurs. Its length, including its tail, could barely exceed one meter, and it weighed no more than one kilogram. While we're talking about small dinosaurs, the presence of feathers was perceived by scientists relatively calmly. But when a feathered Tyrannosaurid, U. Tyrannus, was discovered in China in 2012, scientists were very puzzled. According to various estimates, this large theropod could grow up to 7.5 to 9 meters in length. He was three meters tall and weighed no more than one ton. Threaded feathers up to 20 centimeters long covered the neck, back, legs, and tail of the dinosaur. Apparently, it was cold enough in China 125 million years ago that even the largest dinosaurs had to insulate themselves like that. But evidence of the presence of feathers in Tyrannosaurus rex and its other relatives has not yet been found. Such large animals generate enough heat to do without additional protection from the cold. Examples of this are the modern elephants and rhinoceroses. But despite the lack of scientific substantiation, Tyrannosaurus partially covered with fluff appeared in some documentaries. The TV series Prehistoric Planet. Interestingly, traces of plumage have been found in some species of pterosaurs. They separated from the dinosaur lineage much earlier than the end of the Cretaceous period. From this, scientists concluded that feathers were present in their common ancestors. This means that dinosaurs may have originally had feathers. It's just that some of them got rid of the feathers in the process of evolution. We're grateful to the viewers who watched this video to the end. You can learn more about the history of dinosaurs all from our previous videos. We also talk about different geological eras and the history of the emergence of life on our planet. See you next time.